have some sissy bar made. Getting down the road. You would never know, dude. Nope. I'm just trying to think of like a path. Bike on a lift. Yes, sir. It's another day. That looks so sick. Perfect. Everything will still be on these holes. We gotta get some spacers. Yo, what up, Kirk's Moto Crew? Headed out to uh, Johnny Boys. We are dropping off Sportster Chopper. Josh is gonna get a custom sissy bar made. So we're gonna get the bike over there. John likes to have the bike while he's building a sissy bar. You're doing what? You're doing like a round stock bar. Not sure exactly how it's gonna be pointed. Kind of letting the artist, you know, letting letting the chef cook. Yeah. If you yeah. will. So I'm gonna do a little. Just a small little rack off the back so that there is a little bit of, so I can put luggage in the back for traveling. But other than that, yeah, it's kind of dealer's choice, man. That's why I'm bringing him the bike so he can just kind of look at it and peep the vibe and be like, oh yeah, this thing needs a freaking 38 inch tall sissy bar. Star with top. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know, man, whatever. I just told him modest. It's utilitarian. It's not a show bike anymore. So it's getting ridden. So it just needs to be good for strapping shit to and getting down the road. Dope. All right, guys. Well, this is going to be a multi-part little video. Let's get the bike over to John's and let's go from there, dude. Get it going. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's, we're we're time starting time good. This ride was 82. Yeah. Average speed, distance, and then you can switch it to a like attack style. Wow. You can turn on maps. It plus the, the speedometer will still be over here. I mean, I was behind you, and I will say 82. Yeah, we did about 82. Yeah. That's at one point. Yeah. Or at least you did. At, at I did when point. I went, dude. Those both those semis were coming off a construction site, and I was just like yeah. in sandpaper. Ah, I got oh. to get around. Yeah, I saw you just kind of dip around. I was like, oh shit, I wonder what he's doing. Dude, she rips on the freeway, man. That's fun. That's the uh, the 1200 kit. Yeah. Well, it yeah, it's just a stock 1200. Oh, okay. The yeah. Five speed. Yep. Nice. Four Wait, speed. his is four speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's an 88, so it's a four speed. Yep, 88, four speed, oh, man. Yeah. yeah, that fourth gear just keeps going, dude. I haven't even found the top of it yet. Yeah, fuck. I went like 90 something on it and yeah. just, wow, and I just think it'll, it'll keep giving it. Yeah. What's crazy too is how different your bike sounds versus mine. Mm -hmm. Mine's an 02, five speed. Yeah. And his sounds, and they're both stock, and his sounds so much more grunty than mine does. Oh, really? From same what we know, same yeah, exhaust. same exact exhaust. We don't know if they did anything with like the timing cams or maybe the head, like maybe there's some head work. It doesn't seem like anything is aftermarket. They didn't tell us anything, but I don't know. His bike, I will say rips a little better than mine. You could have the same exact setup on everything and it still would be different. At least from what you've said, has more torque. Yeah, it has an oil bag. How's that holding up for you? Good. Not but leaking at all? No. I put a little black spray paint on the back and you would never know, dude. No. Yeah. I just masked it off so it's super right minimal. The it's great. Yeah. I was worried about it, uh, like the silicon bronze touching the backbone itself. Did it stand it off at all? Yeah, I was Either way. Seems fine to me. I thought, perfect, dude. As long as it's not leaking. That was the that was the goal. Yeah. yeah. Six, so that's your nine sixteenths. Perfect. Sweet. But, uh, yeah, I'm curious what's on yours right now. <laughs> looking at it, it's, it's either the same or it might be a half inch. No, no, it's it's half. Four nine. 
Yeah, I like I like the idea of it being a little bit thicker, so it's a little more stable. This is where they snap usually. Dude. They're gonna break right here because it's the, the first spot of tension. So even this one, you can see it flex right there. Yep. So I see they're gonna snap here, or sometimes people have super strong supports right here, but then this is all unsupported. So basically, these sissy bars differ, but this is the classic spot. So it's 916s, so it's 1018 steel, so it's harder than mild steel. So this is probably just mild steel with chrome on it. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting to use something that has a little bit stronger retensile strength. Yeah, I was looking at your fender brace in here. So Nick had his, that same exact style where it's welded on end. Mm -hmm. So it comes into, so this is a frame rail. It's welded out and then bent like that. And uh, his snapped like right at the weld and down the center of the weld. And I was like, what's that about? He never did a bottom mount. So he didn't think he needed it. But over time, that fender just vibrates, man, and it broke. So I was looking at uh, Matt Whitlock's bikes and he, has, he uses that tab. Instead of going straight into that uh, crossover tube, he'll go either underneath it. So it's welded this direction or over the top. So it's welded on that uh, direction. That's Shit, that smart. Sense. You got more welding area. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You wanted to go 28? I think so. Okay. And that kind of matches your bar line up there. Good. I think I looks say You think 28's good? So or a match, little matching it looks sick. Uh, the bars are gonna come down a little bit. So then should you're you gonna go, come down a couple inches. Should you go lower to accommodate that? I could do that. Do you want the sissy bar taller than the bars? Or do you want it kind of like shorter than the bars? Mm. So going the same height of your bars looks cool usually, but it'll make it look like like you're sitting in a U. You know what I mean? So it looks cool when you're sitting in it. I'd say probably a little lower than a little lower. Yeah. yeah. So that gives it like an aggressive. Work. Yeah. I like this, that. this has this has has sort of like a. It's kind of an aggressive style, almost like. Dang. I'm just trying to think of like a pack. Yeah. Well, since I'm doing the back, yeah, that's fine. I don't gotta worry about stacking too crazy much on the top. Okay. And same exact angle. It almost puts it near the. There's in line with the rear tire. And that is something that depending on because I have a I built a bracket off of here and I got a backrest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so once I get the taller sissy bar and whatever, I may end up, if I need to, like moving the fender or the sissy bar or something, when I go to repaint it, I'll, I'll double do up all that stuff. Okay. So. so they, this is a low brow. Yeah. They make their fender strap in line with it. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see mine's kick back so that my shear force is straight down. Okay. But the sissy bar angle looks like it's back. So they, they make theirs just in line. But yeah, that's one of those options if you wanted to, because the longer that goes with that angle, the further back it's just more stress it's going, you know? But yeah, stress too, if you're like putting a bag on it. But well, there's 24 there with that same in line. And if you go in line, you won't have to undo these bolts. And if you did have a backrest, it would still fit that same area. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. Okay. Are you cool? Do you want a kickback at all? You want like a anything or do you want to keep it just straight up and mm, down? Thinking straight, but okay. uh, that's the kind of stuff where I'm kind of open to interpretation. If you're open to it, I'm, dude, like... I'm open to what, if you think kickback could be sick? I think a little bit of kickback, only because you got pipes that kind of, the long drag, so it kind of gives it this like, it's hauling ass. And like when the top of the sissy bars kick back, it gives it like that, like illusion, and it's like, it's going. I agree. Me, you know? All right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a kickback fan, personally. Yeah, kickback or die. Cause I won't go, I won't go too much cause your bars don't pull back at all. Your bars are like very straightforward. So I feel like something that's just like a minor kickback is kind of cool. Like opens it up a little bit. All right, yeah, let's do it. Okay. I think I decided that I was going to put my license plate up here or something, but then I think I decided I'm just going to keep it here. When we do that little, uh, that little rack thing off the back. Do you need me to add tabs for this guy at all or? No, I'll just, I'll just zip tie it on. Okay. They, uh, lowbrow will make too, unless you want me to pause it out of work, but lowbrow makes the license plate backers mm -hmm. you can just tack it on yourself once you get it where you want it you know yeah if you don't want to do the zip ties but i do zip ties so i can take it off for shows yeah exactly okay yeah and that way if i had like just a bunch of gear it was being obstructed i could just take it off and yep. zip it to the back of my gear yep, <laughs> yep. We've been traveling with them in the back of the truck to a couple spots and I was always waiting and wondering. Yeah. But they were all just brand new and rebuilt, so they're still doing okay. Dude, bike on a lift. Sick. Dude, this is is this the first time this bike's ever been on a lift? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wait, no, RJ. 
Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. Did you build it on the ground? Right. Yeah, we built all uh, our We do all of our ground, stuff dude. on the ground. We don't have a lift. Dude, that's how, that's how I started online. Yep. We just didn't, we don't have room for a lift in that damn garage. <laughs> no, we got so many, many bikes. So many bikes in there. <laughs> it's always something beautiful about seeing a bike on a lift. I don't know why. Yeah, it's amazing. But because you get to look at it straight up and down, it's not. It's yeah. Not really the uh, original leg on my Springer I chopped off is now my lift stop. What? That is dope. <laughs> Somebody twisted them up. Dude, <laughs> that's dope. <laughs> that's so sick. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, there she is in all her glory. Right, you guys both, man, you guys both built amazing jumps. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Really nice. It's cool seeing them together, you know, that's the coolest thing, is having two friends build bikes together, dude. Like, I got to experience that with Nick, and then you guys got your bikes going at the same time. It's like, it's sick when you got someone to do it with, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Keep you pushed. It'll be two winters ago, but we both, like, sat down and we were like, okay, we're gonna buy our frames. Like we're gonna build chops. Like I already had wanted to, and Josh was like, well, I wanna build one too. And then we're like, okay, well, first things first, like we need to buy the frame. Cause the frames like our first thing, we know we're gonna do these gas box frames. Yeah. It's like a big expensive piece. And so we bought the frames and that was kind of like step one. Well shit, now we're committed. <laughs> yeah, cause we're like, okay, now we have a frame. And like I already had a bike and it was just all in parts. I knew I had a broken motor mount, so I knew I needed to do like a case swap on it or try to find somebody to fix the motor mount. But it was, I mean, it was just jacked. Yeah, and then at some point Josh bought his bike, found it on Facebook and- I wanted these wheels, so- Wanted I, the mag wheels, yeah. yeah. Wanted, you know, some can bike that some flat track chicks were turning into a flat track bike and then they decided not to put race gas in it at their house and freaking rode it to the gas station. <laughs> it smelled so good when I got to the gas station. Dude, it was sick. The bike ripped too. And then I said, the cool part is I got it finished and then I still had, cause it was on Facebook Marketplace. So I went to our conversation on there and I was like, hey, this is what that bike, this is like a year and a half later. This is what that bike turned into a center pictures. And they were just like, holy shit, no way that's the same bike. That's cool. No, no, 503 BMX, he's out of Nampa. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's our buddy who hosts the bike nights. Oh, okay. At his spot. Yeah, he did all of our powder coat. Other than a couple pieces. A couple pieces. We my, did from some other guy. My wheels, my lowers, my triples, triples yeah. and my frame were done by somebody else. And then you could see like the triples right here, the wars. They're it's starting to chip. Here. No, it's like oh. all from- There was like dust or debris or debris something. Debris or dust or something. Mm -hmm. They got like underneath it. Or like a dirty gun, or I don't it's know, a something. No, oh, yeah. it's a ripper. Yeah, no, uh, Corey does a good job. I really liked the way it looked for on here with the circle and the color with the, but I don't know if it's gonna look as good when it's right here. I don't think so. I'm mean, gonna probably do, I have, that, I have that chrome cat's eye style on too, I might do. I mean, you have, yeah, you have a couple tail lights mm -hmm. to choose from, yep. so. I have a few, just sitting in the box. I bought like four at a time. I was like, I don't know which one I want. Dude, my chain, Adjusted it yesterday, already loose today. It yeah. Make, it's makes What do you guys no do for sense. chain? We bought we bought just like ones off lowbrow and they just keep fucking stretching yeah. like crazy. They're like the 530 chain. So I, the lowbrow 530. I've had these before, dude, the, and there's no fucking grease in them, they go away. We went to Born Free and by the time we got to Born Free, they had already stretched all the way past our like allotted amount of in the axle plate. Yeah. It's like, dude, these chains. So I, I run 530 O-ring chains, and that's what we got on Andres too. The yeah. O-rings hold the grease in there. You don't have to maintenance them. They just stay greased because it's trapped inside of there. Uh, they're a little bit wider of a chain though, so it'll yeah. eat away at certain things if it's like too thick. Like you'll yeah. be fine with your sports. See, yourself, that, that was the... Uh, they're expensive. He but. had one of those chains originally. He got it from eBay and we put it on, and this is before he cut his fender, and his tire is too wide for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was like butted up. You can see here, there's only a little bit of clearance before it hits the tire. Yeah, that's true. On his, but yeah. <laughs> on mine, I think I could probably run it, because my tires are skinnier than this, and I have a cutout. Yeah, you could run it. But yours, your tires, because I remember you put that on, and you're like, I would have to, you would have to space out this and the inner sprocket like out some in order to accommodate those tires. Yeah, no, before I did that, I'd probably just get a skinnier tire. I'll probably just end up running this chain forever. Who knows? 
Well, I'll leave you to it. Let your let your brain start yeah. closing up along. I hope you guys a holler from this guy. <laughs> See you, brother. Sounds good. Take your time. Thanks, man. I got I got all tomorrow to get on it. So I got the yeah. acetylene torch in here and your material already. Yeah. Everything but the fender strap. So go get some of that. I'm in in no rush, man. I have other motorcycles. So all right. <laughs> Oh, what up, Crooks Motor Crew? Hello! It's another day checking in on the Operation Josh's Sissy Bar, and uh, we are actually headed to John Kunk's house right now because the Sissy Bar is done. Sissy Bar reveal coming your way. Uh, Josh has seen it, so I haven't seen it, so you'll get my full reaction. Get this bike. We're gonna throw it in the back of the truck, get it back to the house. Yeah, let's check out this Sissy Bar. Oh, my bike. Without a Sissy Bar, whoa, it looks totally different, right? It looks like a performance bike now. <laughs> Hello. How you guys doing? Doing Good. well, man. Doing well. I wanted to put it on together so that way you can see the process of it. Yeah. Dude. That looks sick. Yeah, she's burly as <laughs> Good. That's what we needed. It's gonna get a lot of miles on it. Dude. Yeah, what do you think, dude? Dude, love it. Yeah? Awesome. That looks so sick. Perfect. Yeah, she's stout, dude. The quarter inch strap adds some weight to it, but that's so I can thread it, you know? So yeah. You know, I'm fighting nuts or anything like that. That's so sick. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. Love it. Yeah, things I want to go over, man. Uh, first of all, good morning to you guys. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, dude. Um, your wheel is not spaced in the, your frame. Your tire, it's a quarter inch off. I got an inch and three on this side. I got an inch and a half on that side. I've had all kinds of crazy spacing problems with this thing. You can shorten that spacer up if you need to, or you can also space out your front sprocket to come with the wheel to come out. Yeah. Or uh, you can get like dished sprockets on them a certain way. But yeah, it was one of those sounds. I got your disc break over here too. It's favoring this side. Yep. So your rotors, your stuff that's right against this, just kind of like, so it's like everything's got to come over just a little bit. But you had mentioned maybe doing that or addressing them another time. Yeah, I, I've been, dude, I this thing has been spaced four different ways. I, if I yeah. move one thing, it, it changes something else. And sure. it's, I don't know, this is just where I'm at right now. I haven't, it's definitely still an ongoing issue. Okay. It's been a battle. Yeah, no worries, dude. It's, I remember my iron head being a pain in the ass because it's pretty much the same loops I had on my iron head as well. The big twin shit's easy because the spacing is, the same on every space, whereas the sportsers are never meant for hard tail. So it's like there isn't a spacing that exists. You like right. Sometimes they'll make them two stock spacers, and that's cool. You know, it makes it easier. But yeah, there's always some kind of figuring out you got to do. But, um, that being said, I built the sissy bar to to be totally center, and you're with your fender. Sweet. So when it's all together, the fender's you know it's a little bit off of center of what your tire looks like. Mm -hmm. But once you fix that, then everything will be right in line. Perfect. That's what I was saying. Is that way you can put that on any frame and it'll be. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries, dude. Build it oh. to the off spacing. <laughs> that's, well, I mean, that's an option when you're doing shit, right? And I was like, I don't want to do that because then uh, if you fix the tire, which is the right thing, then yeah. the sissy bar will be off. So Yeah, no, totally. We'll 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 get it right and then it'll you know it'll help. Yeah, so I'll show you. So I come in from the back. And you kind of open these up just a little bit, or you can wedge it on there with that powder coat. But you get it on in that area. So now I know that it's on over both axle plates. It's not really lined up right now, but it's just on. And then you can rotate it up. So you rotate it up, and then you flip it across. But first of all, I just want to show you where that line was. So that's oh, pretty yeah. much yeah, where it's going to be. Okay. That's about the same angle I have. I like that like kick back a little bit, so it's not straight up and down. Yeah. yeah. But that way you can put your C bag in here and it'll probably come to be that far. Yep. Chill, dude. Yeah. Just my favorite. Which is super great. Yeah, and then my my back, I have a backrest, which I may, may or may not need. Okay. But yeah, it's just a bracket I built in it. I mean, it just sits like right here. Oh, yeah. It's cool. Same, same texture and everything it matches. I mean, yeah, you might not need that. You might not need it at all. Because if you're going to be traveling, the yeah. likelihood is that you're going to you're gonna have your bag. You're not gonna just have just the backrest. That's true. Unless yeah. you're like go out. Unless you want the backrest here, and then you run a run your bag back here or something. But I don't think you're gonna do that. Yeah, then you're gonna run your big bag here. I'm gonna take my whole fender and go and move it forward. And oh, okay. Everything will still be on these holes. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cut the bottom of the fender off, and then bring this up a little bit and redo this hole and these holes. 
Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that, or if you're gonna just bring those holes up, you can always do that too. Yeah, the whole thing will just come forward. Okay. That way I'll still just have that same amount of fender sticking out. Yeah. But yeah, dude, I freaking, yeah, I love where that ended up. Sweet. That's freaking great. But for now, so once I open the legs, put it on, rotate it up, and I'll put a bolt through it just to like line it up on both sides, but I'm not putting the nuts on it yet. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help me. So I did 7 16 holes, so it's got a little bit of a, a room to wiggle either way, which is what you want putting this shit together. So the most important part is these guys. So put these guys in first. They're fun. They're uh, small thread, you know, quarter or 20. Mm -hmm. So what you don't want to do is get it all bolted in and then try to get these in because you can strip it out. So right. I get these in first, at least start it, you know. I'm kind of looking up underneath. And it is kind of pain in the ass with the leather because you can't like spin it by hand. But you just get them, get them in a spot where you know it starts. Go start it and then get, get these like kind of down a little bit. That way there's like full thread engagement. It's not just like one or two and then you're gonna strip it out when you start wrestling it around, you know? Right. That was it centered. And that's what the weight of the sissy bar. You can kind of see it's a little off center that way. So what I'll do is I'll end up pushing it that way until it's center. And then tighten it up. And then tighten it up. Yeah, and you gotta kind of tighten one side at a time. So for me, it was a little bit easier to like kind of wedge my shoulder, you know, to push right. up one side like that. Yeah, mine's funny, dude. I got two bolts back here, two up front, so it's got four total. And my sissy bar has that same thing. So it's like I'll center it on these holes, and then I'm like looking at my tire, and I'm like, well, I want that rib to be dead center, you know? So I'll like stand the sissy bar up. So I got Yeah, that. you got all these lines that are going on that you gotta make sure. Oh, yeah. A line on a line. Yep. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> Extra centering to happen there. Dude, yeah. Thing turned out so good. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I'm glad you're stoked on it. It was fun to build a continuous sissy bar. It's been a minute since I have, dude. All my sissy bars I've built have like this top to them. So I'll build both sides like in a press break and I'll get them the same. But this one, you have to start from the center. So you just loop it out and then you get these bends, then you get these bends, then you get these bottom bends. And like, you're trying to do it all the same. This is the last bend I do up top. I really like how this came instead of being like straight into this, how you flared that out. Oh, yeah. thanks dude. Yeah, that's like a cool. It's a little little style piece, dude. It's, it's very, you know. All right, sir. Well, again, dude, thanks for your stuff, man. But there's a little bit of a gap from the fender to the feel. You can put a spacer in there if you want to, or like rubber mounts, but you don't have to, because really it's just keeping this fender from falling down or coming up, you know? So they're out just like a 16th on both sides. Oh, that's perfect. You can see where I striped it before. Yeah. Oh, dude, I, I did that real bad on my tire, dude. Like, it took a lot of tread off one time. This was on the way back from Virginia City. I was riding, and after 100 miles, like, my tire finally got hot enough to where it expanded up and freaking touched the bolt that it never touched before. I was like, well, got to find shorter bolts. Because I was I was, thought I was good. thought I had clearance. I guess I didn't. I'm for like five gallons of gas back here now. Yeah. yeah I did. <laughs> Dude, I was, I got my sea bag on this side, and then I do my uh, Abel Brown tent because it's soft on the bottom, so I don't want it to like ruin my chrome. Put that there, and then I put my gas tank on it. But now you can have something down here. Yeah, or license, or something license plate here. Oh yeah. And then whatever the hell. Yeah. If you ever wanted to, I thought about doing it. I was like, oh, I'll let you make a call, but you can always drill a hole through one of these and you can hold the strap. It's just a place for the strap to catch. That way your strap doesn't want to like keep right. and, you know, traveling one way or the other. Yeah, who knows? I don't, I might end up doing, who knows what I might end up doing. This is like the basic of what I needed now. Since I'm gonna be running the tail light down here. Hell yeah. It's still raw steel. You can still weld stuff to it. So if there's something that you wanted your bracket off the side or whatever, you know. It's still, still in that potential for you. It's not powder coated yet, so. Oh, she's, she's getting powder coated this week. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. going for it. Yep. Yeah, he's going full set. Trying to get it done so we can get some filming on it before the weather gets bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to zip tie this real quick. This is your wiring. Oh, okay. So you're saying snip it six inches or whatever. I just un I just push that back until I find your connections. And then oh, I'm just yeah. Yeah, that's great. Your connections and do them. Yeah, it's going, it's going to be like right here. So that's, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, it is crazy. When you start getting longer like that, it's tilted back. You're like, yeah, you called it, but how it, it like really goes. You if know, I was putting insane. people back there, I would be fine with that, but yeah. ain't nobody riding on the back of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Version two. Even if you didn't do anything, you already got enough shelf there to hang something on, you know? If you end up liking that, because right now it's pretty much matches your bike rate, you know, yeah. front end. 
Some guys are into, some guys are not. I personally like when they don't match. Yeah. You know, versus matching them. So I did this angle because when it was smaller and you couldn't really yeah. do anything with that little short sissy bar, yeah. I kind of liked it back because it had more of an aggressive look. Yeah. yeah. But now that it's taller, it's like, uh, plus with weight and everything, I just yeah. kind of want to bring it for the forward. So no, that's perfect how we brought it a little bit further forward. Yeah, you gotta bring this line off your rear tire. Exactly. No, we did it right with bringing that forward and making it a level. I, I love the triangle too. I think it looks so. so oh, I'm glad you said that. Cause yeah. when you're talking about a rack, I was like, I guess I would make a square rack and roll it on the back. I wasn't really into it. And then you sent me a picture with the triangle. And I was like, is this cool? Like Jason yeah. just sent me this, dude. I like that. I never I got it. Kind of there. And then I these never got it running. My no, buddy we had under really? the, oh, okay. he blew oh, the tiny. Thank you, sir. How's that rear looking? Oh, we're almost off there. Let's see here a little bit. There you go. Uh, but would you look at that? Dude, got the bike out of the truck. It's freaking perfect. Look at that. Sweet, dude. The sissy bar came out so rad. Dude, big shout out to John Kunk, dude. You killed this sissy bar, dude. Just the, just the freaking welding, the strap bar. The freaking swagger right here. Just everything, it looks so good. The little gussets right here. Everything about this came out so cool. And it's so sick for us to be able to hit up the local homie, support the local scene, you know, put money in the homie's pocket, dude, and get super cool chopper sissy bar out of it. Doing some fender modification. Josh has got to move the, the whole fender forward, get the, Location on the sissy bar just a little closer without having to mark or make new holes right here So you don't have to drill two extra. It's more about that I don't want I don't want a bunch of fender hanging out of the back behind the sissy bar Well that too and then that's like my these two like holes that would be exposed too. And yeah, that's my main reason Yeah, just trying to keep the same amount like you know a good like five inches here or four inches or something He's loosening the center strap or the center mount and the lower one. And then just gonna kind of take that and move it forward, remark some holes, drill holes down in there instead of here. That's actually a way better way of doing it when you need to bring the sissy bar and stuff forward. I, on the other hand, did, definitely did not do that. Uh, well, those holes, but there's other holes on mine back here. You can't see them though, which is good, but my still got the holes where I mounted the, the freaking tail light though. Now you got options. Now I got options, dude. I just need to find a rad sticker to throw over that. I mean, oh, the Crooks Moto's Chopper sticker, dude. Yeah. That would be dope. Coming soon to the website, guys. Crooks Moto Chopper stickers. If you were at Party at the Pen and you snagged one, they are limited stickers. But we'll probably make some and put them on the website because they're cool. All right, guys, update. So, got the uh, sissy bar in the spot. It's really hard to see with the the layer here, but this is where the sissy bar is gonna be location-wise, conjunction to the front end. But the uh, situation now, we gotta get some spacers to space out from the uh, center fender mount and probably the lower one too, yeah? Well, I guess you can pull that one out because it's got little slots. You can pull it out as far as it goes and then figure out the spacing. Yeah, gonna have to space it a little for sure. But as you guys can see, that's where the mounts were before. That was gonna be quite a difference, dude. That's a pretty good amount in terms of where your sissy bar was before. Going for three inches? Yeah. And I mean, the angle was a lot further back and originally set up just to look good look cool because it was a shorter sissy bar and kind of just like almost angled it similar to the forks but now this is like gonna have a bag on this thing and be able to sit in the seat and lean back on it and this is just the coolest thing i just can't get over this i want one of those so bad for this like that would be so cool all right 
got my rear fender lower mount off, <laughs> in which I busted on my way home from Virginia City. And Josh has got some spacers. Trying to find some spacers for the... Uh, so these are good for fender. here. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. But I'll go get some, probably some chrome ones. Are you not gonna pull it any far further forward? Just how it's spaced right now? Yeah, it's just naturally how the fender sits. Nice, dude. All right, let's try to get this frickin' bracket going. All right, guys, tomorrow is gonna be the fab day. We got the sissy bar on. Got some spacers, you're gonna just have to get some bolts, right? And cut your holes and make your tail light bracket. Yep, tail light bracket's in, in production right there. In the tail light, sweet dude. All right, next day, we're gonna get to going, dude. Last fab day. Let's go.